Hi everybody, my name is Caroline Keats and I am the Managing Director of Energy Elements. Energy Elements is an ASX listed African focused exploration company. We have uranium assets in Niger and we have copper assets in the Kalahari Copper Belt in Botswana. Energy Elements recently announced a resource update. So now we have a shallow inferred mineral resource of 31.1 million tonnes at a grade of 315 parts per million for 21.5 million pounds of U308. This represents an increase of around 7% in grade and 100% in mineral content. So it was an important event for the company. Today, I have with me Dave Princett, the resource geologist and competent person responsible for our recent resource update. So thank you very much for being here, Dave. No problem at all, Caroline. Dave, we've just updated the resource at Targeted, which is located at our Agadez project. What opportunities do you see that we have to increase this resource and also to add more pounds in the ground? Well, I think at this stage, given the work that's been done, um, the sort of component parts of the Takadit resource still remain open in multiple directions. Um, there have been good indications from the sort of most recent drilling program that there is a sort of significant trend, um, particularly for the Takadit centre uh, portion of the deposit, um, being open to the south. Um, we've got three or four lines of drilling there, which all hit mineralization, which have been included in this resource. I think, you know, the, the value in the project at the moment is that it is very near surface, it surface outcrops that have been good um, values returned from um, surface sampling, um, which show that the mineralization continues right to surface. Um, the current maximum depth is about 37, 38 metres. So it's well within open pitable range. There are a number of different um, horizons within the deposit. Um, and I think with the most recent drilling, um, you've been able to much better define the local geology, define the controls on mineralization and as a consequence have removed a little bit of internal waste that was included in the previous resource estimate and that has resulted in the um, increase in grade. Last year following our review of historical exploration data uh, our understanding of mineralization across our tenements and also our knowledge of the regional geology we identified an exploration target at Agadez of between 90 to 130 million pounds. We're expecting to see grades of between three and 400 parts per million. And uh, we're looking to see this within intersections of between two and five metres. This exploration target actually identified mineralisation from across our tenements. Dave, do you have any comments in relation to that? The exploration target that you currently have um, is defined on all of the three tenements um, at the moment. Current exploration or current, I suppose, resource development focus has been on the Takadit deposit um, with a limited um, amount of work completed on the more regional uh, sort of prospects that that are in those three tenements. A lot of the historical drilling that we have, um, particularly from a regional perspective, was drilled into carboniferous material. Um, that's where the, uh, the sort of majority of the higher grade hits are, and they are spread throughout the tenement package at the moment. So even in the Tarkadit area, there are uh, hits in the Carboniferous, um, which is because of the orientation of the stratigraphy between 40 and 80 metres below the current deposit. Um, and those hits are seen throughout the tenement package, which is where um, the sort of higher grade expiration target and the higher total contained metal content expiration target sits. So it's within the entire tenement package. 
Um, and the work that's been completed on Takadi is a stepping stone to advancing towards that exploration target. As part of the resource update, we upgraded the grade to 315 parts per million. And we've talked a little bit about grade, but how does our grade compare to others within the region and what does it mean for our project? Um, generally, the grade is lower than the other projects within the, uh, the region, the Arano, uh, Goviax and Global Atomic projects. Um, however, Having said that, they tend to be much deeper. Um, indeed, some of them are underground deposits only and therefore require an apparent higher grade. Mm. Um, having a near surface deposit um, mitigates some of the uh, concerns with lower grade mineralization. However, as we've said before, a lot of those deposits are in Carboniferous. The Carboniferous is predominantly higher grade anyway, um, and the Carboniferous material is um, present throughout the three tenements that are, you currently hold. So there is, I think, a significant scope for additional mineralization and additional higher grade mineralization. Um, even parts of the Takadit deposit are coming in at similar grades to those seen in the other projects within the area. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's beyond the bounds of possibility that um, should we be able to target mineralization more efficiently, um, we can increase the grade reasonably, um, albeit at potentially a slight reduction in tons to remove, but um, it would still be near surface. Dave, how does the grades of our deposit compare to the other deposits in wider Africa, like Namibia, for instance? Yes, certainly if you if you look at some of the Namibian projects, uh, Langer Heinrich is the sort of higher grade um, globally um, deposit there, near surface. Um, effectively soft rock. Um, if you look at uh, deep yellows tumus deposit, it's a similar grade. Um, a lot of the other deposits, even the large scale hard rock deposits, as far as their mineable grades go, are in the same ballpark. We've recently undertaken some ground resistivity test work at Niger. Uh, how do you think that's going to help us with our exploration efforts uh, on the project? I think the initial results are extremely promising. Um, it does seem to uh, enable a, a, a reasoned view on where the paleo channels are and the paleo channel mineralization is extremely important to the near surface deposits. The other valuable thing is it gives a window into the uh, basement uh, locations faulting that penetrates the basement and that's believed to be a significant control on mineralization particularly in the carboniferous um, and the test lines that have been done show that um, particularly on the northeastern line um, there is a good conjunction between basement uh, faulting and high grade mineralization um, and that's definitely a, a process that's seen at the other uh, higher grade carboniferous deposits within the region. Off the back of the successful ground resistivity test work that we've just completed, we can now use that information to help us better target our drilling program as we move forward. So we're really happy with that. Yeah, absolutely. They some of the drill targeting had been based on airborne radiometrics, which is fine if you've got near surface deposits. But if you're targeting deposits which are deeper, um, you need a good view on where the major basement structures are. Mm. Um, and the airborne magnetic survey that was completed gives you some of that. However, it's within sort of a 
plus or minus 200 meter uh, positioning, whereas this ground resistivity gives you a much tighter control on that down to probably plus or minus 40 to 60 meters. So it's a, a, a much more targeted approach. It allows you to get extra value for the drilling because you're not sort of drilling outside the area of interest trying to find it. Um, you've got a much better handle on where the major structures are and where the uh, paleo channels are. Thank you so much, Dave. I think that's very illuminating and timely in light of the resource update that we've just done. No problem at all. Thank you so much.